Happy Monday, everyone. This is Martha with Nature Niche. And this week I'm coming to you on location from Tomlinson Arboretum in Clinton Township. And uh, we're doing a vegetation survey here with my friend, Steve Thomas. He's an ecologist with uh, environmental consulting and technology. And we're gonna review, um, now's the perfect time to take a look at some um, similar aster species. So we're gonna do some compare and contrast between um, Heath Aster and Frost Aster, and Smooth Blue Aster and New England Aster. I hope this helps you as you get out in the field looking at wildflowers this fall. First, we're going to take a look at two species of small flowered white asters that are easy to confuse. This is Hairy Aster, also known as Frost Aster, Symphiotrichum pilosum. And this is um, Heath Aster, Symphiotrichum ericoides. Is called hairy aster and if you look at the stems of hairy aster they are indeed hairy they're kind of rough and so um, hairy aster is probably our weediest native aster so it is it is prone to showing up kind of almost in roadside ditches you know and along definitely old fields all over the place um, old meadows, overgrown meadows and pastures, hairy aster will show up. And even though it's weedy, it's I would never consider it aggressive. Um, it is not something that I would ever feel I need to pull out because when there's more maybe valuable things planted along with it, it will eventually decrease. It, it's perennial, but it may not live long. And here's its little cousin um called heath aster it's very similar looking um oftentimes the flowers on heath aster are smaller so i'm lucky here that they are smaller sometimes they're not actually smaller than hairy aster it can depend on the individual plant um and uh heath aster also tends to have smaller leaves it and it is it's almost like a heath plant like something that's more um it's actually a more composed more i would call almost more handsome or more um evenly distributed plant in its shape whereas hairy aster is kind of like uh the guy who like didn't shave for like two weeks <laughs> <clears throat> and heath aster is like the guy that shows up very shaved yeah, yeah very managed <laughs> organized yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah heath aster is often shorter than hairy aster but again these are not things that you can always count on um and the the stems of heath aster are not quite as hairy they're they are pubescent maybe but they're it's a little softer this is a little bit rougher on the stem heath aster is slightly more conservative it will grow in old fields as well um but it, uh, it, it's also in, in actual prairies. It can, in, a, in an old prairie that is where a lot of conservative species exist, this can kind of grow along with those, whereas hairy aster is pretty much gone when, when a system becomes very um, kind of, well, highly evolved and developed. So then on another thing you can check, because yeah, sometimes they do look very similar, especially if you're looking at little individuals or things that have been mowed recently. I like to check the flower bracts. So on um, frost aster, so these are the little green things underneath yeah. the flower. The They're very sharp. Shingles. Yeah, yeah, shingles. That's a good way to describe them. They're very sharp pointed. And if you compare that with the heath aster ones, they're more like nubby or like truncated, kind of blocky. And so I always like to check that because yeah, sometimes the flower size is yes. similar. And if you're just not sure, that's a good yeah. other that set of- That is the technical way because I was giving you those other clues that are not 100% diagnostic. Yeah, and, and this, this, the thing about the um, the sharpness of the, the, the it's called a, it's actually 
so that has another name these shingles are called filleries um, and the fillery is is these um, shrunken modified shingled leaves up to the up to the base of where the composite flower starts and so the, the like she said the hairy aster um, fillery or shingle is actually you know twice as sharp I sure can't tell. Wow. Yeah, out with a magnifying glass. You know. okay. Well, that explains it. It really it. helps. So, a hand lens. Indicative too, not just the kind of uh, sharp. I don't know. You, the key could say something about length, but it's okay. it's pointed like um, the difference between um, how pointing one of my fingers is and how pointing my hand is. You know, it's there's finer. a difference. Yeah, yeah my my hand is kind of dull, dull point, and the finger is kind of a sharp point. Ow. There you go. That was a great compare and contrast. <laughs> Thank you. Next, we're going to take a look at uh, two aster species that are in the uh, blue-purple um, realm with yellow centers that can be confused. This one is smooth blue aster, Symphiotrichum leve. And we'll also take a look at New England aster, Symphiotrichum novae angliae. There's a, a blue aster and a purple aster. Oh, I thought that was. That was like chicory. Is that an aster? This That's is the chicory. purple aster. Yeah, they're oh. yeah. So uh, this is a shorter, uh, this is a more conservative species than. Um, than the other two I just showed you, this blue one. <clears throat> it's got very smooth leaves. So if you feel these leaves, your fingers. Ooh, looks smooth. Very smooth. Mm -hmm. Almost as glabrous as a billiard ball. <laughs> we love Steve's yeah, analogies. Also, the leaves are not so, these not be yep. right? yep, these leaves, uh, not only are they very smooth, but they come down to the stem and instead of kind of inserting into the stem with like just a a projection or like a, a direct narrow attachment, they kind of clasp and almost come around the stem, hug it, kind of like it, like it, little earlobes almost. So you would consider um, that clasping? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, or it's mm -hmm. clasping or semi-clasping or... Okay. I always think of that as being less clasping than that. Yeah, at yeah. least... Um, at least two oh, different? That's a balloon. Yeah, that's a balloon, she said. Mm. Yeah, so, that's and it's, it's a very pretty one. So this, this, um, Smooth blue aster. Smooth blue. Yeah, smooth blue aster. Lavis? Aster lavis, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lavis. Or, or symphotric. Trichum. Trichum mm -hmm. lavy now. Um, so I, <clears throat> um, it is a species that would have grown in um, mesic to drier situations in prairies and savannas. It's actually, it's just as happy in savannas as in prairies and it's just as happy in sandy soils as it is loamy soils um and again it's it's rather conservative um but it you can actually see a lot of it this time of year right now driving along some of the older highways because um when those highways were built in the 1940s 50s there was still a lot of smooth blue aster on the landscape and it often was able to grow on dry road cuts where they, back then they didn't seed a lot under the highway side, they just kind of let it go and native stuff sometimes established. So yeah, here's another, this is a bigger one, same thing, smooth blue aster. Um, the edges of the leaves can be, um, have little teeth on them and you can feel those too. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty tough plant. Um, it will grow in very, very dry situations and still be able to flower. And it's probably longer lived than hairy aster. Already, 
Yeah. This, the beautiful purple New England aster. So, um, differences between, uh, uh, New England aster has kind of fuzzyish leaves. Yeah, they're not, they're not real smooth. Yeah. They're like your, your, well, like your 12 year old or 14 year old son's face, almost. <laughs> well, less rough than my face right now. I'm trying to think of a. They also have classing leaves. Would you, can you use that as a comparison though? Like more yeah, class, more um, dramatically class? Um, well, I would say, yeah, they're a little more clasping. I don't know how consistent that is, but they're hairier. Definitely. The stems are also hairier than smooth blue aster. And, um, there are more leaves on New England aster yeah. oftentimes like these, okay. the stem on uh, smooth blue aster has fewer leaves mm -hmm. often. Um, and also the center of the New England aster flower is is, is more orange, oh. I think. Yeah. Is it more yellow yeah, versus yellow. more yellowish? It's I think typical. It's more of a golden. Orange. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Golden. That's a better word. Um, yeah. Yeah. New England aster. So it is also um, a little bit more as about as picky as heath aster or even hairy aster. It can get around. It's still getting around on the modern day landscape. It'll show up in particular in damp areas. It, it um, does not do as well if an area is very dry. So most areas don't have both New England aster and smooth blue aster. It's generally a typical area is gonna be too dry or too wet for one or the other. But here where it's mesic, we can kind of support both. Sure. Yeah. And you know about the scratch and sniff trick too. So New England aster has has an aroma, and smooth okay. aster does not. Hairy. What, what's? It's kind of a sweet. Hairy. Yeah. Yeah. This so is... if you if you want to double check yourself, New England aster has that nice sweet scent. Okay. And smooth and aster the, um, the does leaf? not. Yeah. If you crush the foliage. Okay. I hope this little compare and contrast uh, helps you learn our native aster species. They're so important to have blooming in the fall. Um, they're really great late season pollinator support. So check out these species. I'll include some links um, where you can learn more about them. And uh, I hope you consider putting them in your own landscapes. Take care and have a good week.